so yeah, I started when cooking when I was probably, you know, like most people, four or five years old, really young. Um, I'm from, born, again, I'm born and raised in Little Rock, Arkansas. My mother was always kind of the cook of the family. Um, my grandfather was actually a mess sergeant um, in the military, and he kind of passed that down to his family. Um, so I started cooking in restaurants when I was about 16. Um, went to culinary school at 18. Um, graduated from Johnston Wells University and just worked in and out of restaurants. And I think one of the things that um, sparked me first to, to really push onto my own thing was um, I was working somewhere and I watched some guys who had a better relationship with the executive chef move up above me. But I felt like I had the talent. In fact, I knew I did. I had been working in restaurants since I was 16 at that point. And I watched these white guys, and, and no offense to them, they were good cooks. But I watched them excel, uh, excel past me when I definitely had the chops to kind of develop my own thing and move forward faster. So um, that was definitely kind of one of the beginning points for me to want to go into my own um, lane and do my own thing as far as my own business. Um, my name is Jermon Booz. I am the owner of uh, Upper Crust LLC, which is a pizza place uh, meant to also work with re uh, people who are re-entering the, the community. In addition to that, I am also um, a co-founder of a podcast called The High Vibe Guys. And uh, so that was, that was kind of one of the things that sparked me to do my business. I love food, I've always been passionate. I'm a classically trained chef, um, went to Johnston Wells University, worked in a dozen plus restaurants, worked in all types of casinos, whatever you can imagine, I've been there. Sous chef, executive chef, played all types of hats, wore all types of hats, but um, when I moved to Detroit, um, over the time I realized that I wanted to be able to help that particular population. Um, actually, when I was young, my mother married a felon and um, I watched him go through these struggles of trying to uh, get a job, and I watched him re-enter the system based off the fact that he couldn't find a job to support himself, and he didn't really have the tools and the resources to support himself. So, Upper Crust is like a combination of my passions. I wanted to be able to also impact diet, right? So, with, with, with pizza, you can do vegan, I can do keto, I can do gluten-free, I can also work with urban farmers, right? So, pizza was a great canvas to do a lot of different things that could impact the community, but also be economically successful. Um, at the end of the day, a business is a business, right? So if it doesn't make dollars, it don't make sense. Um, pizza has a good margin on it. Um, and then also the last thing would be, is something that you can train people on as far as how to develop a business themselves. So for the re-entry program, I might not be able to make you a five-star chef, but I can teach you how to make a great pizza and also teach you the basis of business as we kind of go through that process. Um, so um, I'm one of the co-founders of Taste of Diaspora. Me, Edric, and uh, Raphael um, are all good friends. Um, we all are food justice advocates. We all have different lanes inside the community as far as food goes. And um, during Thanksgiving, E started a program where she was working with uh, Make Food Not Waste, and uh, she gave it a thousand meals. And we had a conversation that kind of evolved from there, like how can we do this again, but kind of do it based around some of the things that we're passionate about. And kind of from that conversation, it evolved into the Taste of Diaspora, where now you're including um, our interest in history, our interest in culture, and our interest in, in like empowering the, the black restaurant, agriculture, food industry in general. And um, it's just been evolving since then. So many goals are beginning to evolve from this. Um, one, definitely empowering and telling the story of restaurateurs, um, agriculture, people in food justice in general, and then also people who are developing products. Two, to be able to circulate that dollar inside the community a couple more times. So that's why everybody associated with the project is black. Everybody in every aspect of this is black so far, because we want to empower us as much as possible. The next thing for me would be just to tell that story and to show respect to our ancestors, right? Um, Unfortunately, we don't have the same knowledge of our, of our food history that a lot of cultures have, right? Um, and it's one of those things that is getting lost, and as we move forward, we see the importance of trying to put that in the hands of the people so they have a better understanding of where food comes from and how we impacted the landscape of food. Um, we were brought to this country to be farmers, to be agriculturalists, and um, from that space, we've, tried, we've actually nourished the country for 400 plus years. One of my big goals is to be able to speak to the high school students, the people who are younger than us, so they can have an understanding of why this food is important, why knowing where the food comes from is important, the, the history behind it. All of that has significance and meaning. It's probably nothing more important in our culture than food, and it's one of those things that I don't think we have any understanding of the importance of. So for me, from those particular angles, I love um, what we're doing and the, the impact we're, we're going to make. 
because trying is a curse word to me. Um, but I love the impact we're about to make with this particular project. 